know. Sure. Relatively. Okay, Are you done? You done stuff in your face, or do you want to take? No, it? I'm still eating. Okay. I guess we'll 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 wait a few more minutes. Well, at least while 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 Sabrina is finishing up eating, if anyone wants to fill us in on what happened last time. Oh, not nothing serious. <laughs> yeah. Got out, off the planet. You did. Planet. Yeah. Prevented a made, genocide, possibly. Made a mortal enemy. Uh, with a war world, a veteran, and uh, now we're being interviewed by Globe Division. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should go into detail about those events and how they came to be. Because that's, that's the outcome of everything. Maybe, but we maybe need to we talk shouldn't. About... <laughs> what maybe was... we shouldn't. <laughs> Second hand, not go to Camelot. So, so how did we get to all of those events happening? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did a lot of stupid shit. <laughs> uh -huh. Harry, you're not supposed to. Agree. We were all set to go fight God, and then found out that we could just avoid fighting God. Yes. It, so we didn't fight the God, and then we got picked up by some super special charlatans, fiends, and rogues, yeah. imposters. So it wasn't our fault. We were sent. Uh, we decided to run a distraction mission to get Doctor Manhattanzilla away from the base, and because First Track, with his meth predator cognition, guessed that the tissue sample was acting as a beacon for the other creatures in the area. Um. So we run the mission get the uh, tissue sample in the river, and then a Slay operative shows up. We don't trust him. He leads us to a broken-down-ass ship. We all get inside, and it's revealed to us that it wasn't a Slay operative and his two buddies. It was the Vevafons. That wasn't revealed to you. You figured it out on your own. Well, that was... Pap did and passed it on to Reggie. It was revealed still... to the audience. There's a, yeah. there's still an audience to That's this. true. There is, um, there is an audience, yeah. All two people. All two people. Those people well, are very at, excited. At least two. <laughs> yeah. Um, Could be two people, uh, two groups of people. Hey, the YouTube numbers The new YouTube numbers do better than you think. Yeah. So, um, we... We uh, made a deal with the Vevafons, basically letting them go in exchange for them uh, killing the uh, research team for us. <laughs> Sounds bad when you say it out loud. Well, Especially what? when you're laughing about it. <laughs> why, why did... Why uh, yeah, did so thing? they take their ship, drop us off at the river point where we met them take their ship fly over the research center and just light it up with miniguns we you know trek the mile back pick the bones of the area fail some survival rolls do a distress signal and sit there and starve half to death waiting for the real sleigh to pick us up and then when we finally got back to mort we got a message saying, go to Cloak Division. Let us uh, rest it off for a bit. Yeah, right. I mean, we we had a month <laughs> on the ship, you know, slowly building ourselves back up on airline food. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got home, and then they let us sleep, and then they're like, hey, guess what? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so. Trouble. <laughs> Leads me to believe we're fine. All right. Well, that's, that leaves Work. us where we are at currently. Um, okay, so uh, once all of you uh, arrive at uh, the Cloak Division offices, you are each brought into your own individual rooms, um, which y'all y'all remember this before, um, but you are brought into your own individual spots, single room, one table, two chairs, a mirror that is clearly there for recording a conversation um and you are completely isolated from everybody else so 
uh, in order to appropriately replicate this, um, as I am talking to each of you, I am going to be muting and deafening everybody else. So, uh, as I'm going through and doing the interviews, you will not be able to see, hear, oh, well, you may be able to see, but you won't be able to hear, um, what everybody else is saying. You will not, and they will not be able to hear you. So I do apologize that there's going to be, you know, some dead space in between all of this. Um, and I honestly don't know how long this is going to take for each of you. This could be a shorter game. It could take a bit. It's going to kind of all hinge on what the conversations are. Um, but that's... For the purposes of, of this kind of setup, this is the best way I could figure it out. Um, so, you know, I would ask uh, each of you to kind of keep in the spirit of that and keep the communication amongst each other about in-game stuff to a minimum. Um, you know, if you want to just chatter in the out-of-character Discord or whatever, you know, feel free. Um, but in terms of, like, devising plans and shit... Um, I would, I would please advise against doing that. So, uh, we will start off with the leader. So, uh, Reggie, we're going to go ahead and start things off with you. So let me just go ahead and shut the lights off on everybody else here. Boop, 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 boop. Not me. I need to talk. Boop, boop. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Reggie, you're sat in the room, and it takes probably about a half hour before uh, anybody comes in. Uh, and then, um, finally, you know, after after that wait, which seems considerably longer, uh, man walks in, human man, probably in his uh, late 30s, early 40s, um, short, uh, not like super crop, but just kind of shorter, uh, brown hair with a little bit of gray in it. Um, neatly shaven, unlike me, uh, wearing a nice suit, um, you know, uh, like a, a dark brown suit, uh, and a tie dressed up well. Uh, he kind of comes in, uh, holding a coffee. Uh, he sits down across from you and he says, uh, he has like a, a folder, um, a, a, like a tablet, like an iPad sort of thing in his hand. And he's like, um, Reginald, uh, right? Reggie. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, he says, um, nice to meet you. My name is uh, Alan Watson. Uh, I am an investigator uh, for Slay Industries. And I just wanted to talk to you today about your experiences on Doll Blair 3. Uh, he kind of glances down at his cup. He's like, are you, you thirsty, hungry? Can I get you anything? I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, how are you feeling uh, in the since you've since you've come back? I know it was you were in pretty rough shape when the uh, when the extraction team picked you up. How are you doing now? Um, how long has it been? Uh, so from when you got picked up to now, it's been a, a little over two weeks. Um, well, it's probably actually been closer to a month because it was. Uh, a couple weeks for them to get to you, a couple weeks for you to get back. So it's been about a month, but you've probably been out of the shit for about three weeks. But half of, but two of those weeks were like on the uh, shit back. So, you know, like you've really had about, you know, eh, probably about three, three to four days of resting and recovering on your own. Um, so, you know, you might still be feeling like a little bit under the weather, but you've had time to eat and rest and kind of get your bearings back. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you know, it's been pretty tough, um, but I'm slowly, you know, one day at a time. He nods. He's I like, suppose. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going just... to make a joke, but... He just says, uh, well, I, I know there were pretty extreme circum or, um, conditions that you were picked up from, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. Uh, so let's just try and make this as, as quick as we can, and then and then we'll, we'll figure out where we go from here. Um, he says, uh, so why don't we just start off with... Uh, he kind of shrugs a little bit. He's like, tell me what happened. Tell me about your whole experience. The, the whole th experience, like, since we got there? Sure. Well, some of it's a little hazy from, you know, the 
starvation and exhaustion and all that, but uh, I mean, I'll I'll do my best. Um, I mean, the whole thing started off kind of weird. The uh, <clears throat> the BPN was a little odd, but um, it seemed legitimate. So, um, we went there. We were met by some researchers. Um, I worked very hard to keep the peace uh, with everyone. I think, you know, um, meeting new people, trying to get used to a new place, um, tried to make sure everybody was kind of on the same page. Uh, we, while we were there, um, they were telling us that there's these people there, um, Kasani, right, I think, uh, they were locals, we were trying to decide whether or not they were hostile, there was a lot of research as far as the, uh, creatures on the planet, um, found out that they had some connection to the, the Ebon Flux situation mm -hmm. thing. I, I don't know that stuff that much, but uh, the, my friend Patch knows more about that. Too. I'm sure they will explain that part to you a little better. Um, and so we did a lot of exploring and researching and things like that. Uh, that's how things went for the majority, until everything kind of went a little crazy. So what happened in that final day? <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be honest with you about, uh, about one thing in particular that, uh, and I don't know if anyone ever picked up or got our reports. Did you guys get our reports? We received all the reports that were sent by the research team, yes. Okay. So, we happened to find out some very sensitive information um, that I tried to hide in the reports. I don't know if anyone picked up on that. He, uh, he squints his eyes. He says, um, he said, no, we weren't, we didn't look through the reports for any coded or hidden information because we weren't expecting it. Why did you feel you couldn't share this information with the research team? Hmm. So here's where, uh, things get a little crazy. Um, and so I'm, sh as I'm sure you're aware, there are, uh, these, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that it's, uh, Viv Vivisons? He, Does that sound familiar to you? He, he says, Vivisons? What about them? Yeah. So, we heard the locals use that term and they I believe were a threat uh, I believe so I encrypted the information on the off chance that they would have intercepted and known that we knew they were there and he says, uh, and, but you didn't decide to share this information with the other members of the research team personally while you were in the camp? I was afraid. Uh, I've lost a couple team members already, as you know, and I think I just, uh, was nervous. Um, 
and was trying to avoid conflict, and obviously I failed uh, miserably. So, what makes you think that that would have arrived, that would have brought up conflicts among the research team? I thought that them knowing would have put them at further risk. Uh, some of those team members, I think, would have definitely tried to uh, do something about it. Uh, well, I shouldn't say definitely, but I just didn't want people to get hurt, and obviously uh, I failed. Uh, give me a persuasion check, Reg. You would think I would remember every time how this works. <laughs> Just two two dice plus your plus your uh, persuasion skill, and then you add in your bonus to each of those rolls. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a plus. Ten, if that's not a neocon. Okay. okay, gotcha. Oh, no, nine. Sorry, it's plus, plus nine. Plus nine. Okay. Okay. Um, I. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, he, Alan, kind of, uh, you know, thinks about this, and he's like, "So you, you found out about this information. So the locals had brought up. They they were using the Veva. They were mentioning Vevafons." You decided that you were not going to tell the research team because you did not want them to be put into a threatening position. What did you do with this information? Did you research it any further on the planet? Did you make any contact with the native people? Minimal, but not really. Um, like I said, I tried, we, I tried to okay. share that information, but obviously I... Uh, wasn't overt enough about it in my reports. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the day, the day that everything happened, uh, the uh, there's a creature on the planet. This giant, like, what I know what a dinosaur is. Sure, yeah. Okay, giant dinosaur-like thing. Uh, and my... Team, my team had killed one, but it was smaller, but it was still huge, and there was a piece of it in the lab, and we had kind of figured out that that was probably like a tracking beacon, so we, as the, the storm was happening, and this creature was out there, we tried to get the thing away from the researchers and everything, and upon coming back, um, everything was all destroyed and I can only assume the that it was the Bevathons based on the way the damage was um, unless it was the dinosaur but uh, it, I think it's more likely it was the other and and He's... I regret that I wasn't uh, didn't handle the situation better he says um so did you did you see and hear the attack on the research station? Because it was very clearly rockets, gunfire. It would have made a lot of noise. Did you witness it? Did you hear it? We heard. Uh, we were kind of... There was a storm. There was the dinosaur. We were running frantically trying not to get eaten by a dinosaur. So it was kind of hard to tell what was going on in the moment. It was all very... Blurry and traumatizing. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, he kind of holds up the, the data pad. He says, so I just wanted to ask you some questions because, as I said, we did receive all the reports from Grealish. Uh, and there was a couple things here that seemed to be of note. Um, first of all, do you believe that there was any tension between yourselves and the research team? A little bit, yes. As I said, uh, I think being stuck uh, on an unfamiliar planet uh, all together in this small little research place uh, 
I think that brings tensions in general mm. to any team, and uh, I did my best to to help uh, keep that at bay. Mm. So Grealish was the leader of the operation um, at Camp Terra 15. Uh, did you feel at any time that it was appropriate to share the information that you had, at least with him, so he could perhaps try and work things out and see what the best approach would be rather than keeping all the information? Uh, now, all of your team knew about this, correct? The Vevafons and the locals and whatnot. Yes. So, did you feel at any point that it would have been appropriate to bring in Grealish so perhaps he could have coordinated some sort of strategy to get the information back to us or to figure out what your next steps would be as, you know, a, as a full group um, for, you know, research on the planet? I mean, looking back on it, the way you say it like that, it sounds like that would have made sense, but uh, at the time... Uh... I think it was I you know I had made attempts to to get along with and relate to him and be on the same page but it just uh it was it was a little difficult um he nods he says I uh and in reading through Grealish's reports I do see that there was some outlines of the um tension there as well so I'm just going to read a few things um from his reports for you uh, the new squad arrived today to assist us with navigation, but with navigating the trials and tribulations of the planet. There was a little tension between them and the research team. Hopefully we can work past that and get on the same page. We'll need to if we want to survive and prosper here. Uh, another one some days later, after an expedition, squad RRPR had an altercation with Conathor. He takes his orders very seriously, and the squad resented the fact that he would not assist them. I understand their frustration, and we'll try and smooth things over. Uh, next one, uh, was a few days after that. I sent the squad RRPR is hiding something from me and the rest of the research team in regards to their findings in Doppler 3. Can't be sure as to what, but they frequently speak in hushed tones in corners of the station where, when we are not around, I'm unsure what caused them to be this combative with their fellow sleigh workers, but, uh, we all have skeletons in our closet here. I can only hope that it's nothing that's going to compromise the mission or our safety. And then... Last entry um, was a couple days before the incident. Uh, earlier today, I had an unusual run-in with Reggie, the RPR squad leader. He was insistent on personally sending a report back to Mort Central and seemed to want to do so in private. Uh, I was able to defuse the situation, but it only contributed to the suspicion that the group is hiding something. So he kind of like sets it on the table. He says, so clearly uh, they were aware of the tensions uh, and as well as something being being amiss and you know i don't know why he didn't try and handle that more directly maybe he was planning on doing so but ultimately it doesn't really matter i uh, so in concluding everything you were unaware you had heard about the potential presence of evafons on the planet from the locals um, you were unaware of the exact happenings in regards to the attack itself. Um, and you refused or you withheld the information from the research team because you were afraid of getting them involved and potentially putting them in danger. That's your, that's your conclusive statements on everything. Yes. As you said, uh, Grealish did not ever address any of those things to me directly that did, he wrote in the report. Did you address the tensions with him at any point? I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, I tried. Like I said, I, I tried to get along with him. It was, it was a little difficult. Uh, again, I say, I, I openly admit that I probably could have handled everything a little bit better. I think it was tough uh, being in an unfamiliar place and, you know, hindsight. He nuts. He says, okay, well, thank you for the information. Um, now I have to um, get uh, the statements from each of your squad mates. So he says, uh, just um, stay here. I know this isn't, he kind of motions, the most relaxing environment. Unfortunately, we really don't have anything that's meant to um, be terribly comfortable or accommodating but if you need anything drink something to eat something like that 
um, just uh, knock on the door and somebody will get you whatever you need. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. He, uh, he nods to you. Uh, he gets up, he turns around, uh, and he walks out. Um, okay, so this time, uh, Reggie, I'm going to go ahead, mute you, deafen you, and I'm going to move on to the next one. Patch. Patch. Yeah. Okay. So you've been sitting in uh, this room for about an hour. Um sure. You can kind of hear muffled noises in the room next to you. Um, one of them sounds kind of vaguely like Reggie. Um, so you know that there's some sort of conversation being had, but the thickness of the walls makes it really kind of impossible to sort out exactly what is being said. But after about an hour or so, that conversation stops. And then a moment or two later, um, the door opens and a man walks through Um Late 30s, early 40s, uh, short, but not like like cropped super tight, but like short brown hair, slight kind of bits of gray in it, clean shaven, wearing a, a nice brown suit, you know, tie, um, dressed up nicely. Um, he's just kind of carrying a coffee in his hand. He kind of sits it down at the table. He's got like a little iPad um, in his hands um, with presumably the case information on there. And uh, he looks at it and he says... Um, so I understand you go by Patch, correct? Yes. Yes. Says, um, do you need anything to drink or eat before we get started? I should be good. He nods. Says, uh, how, have you, uh, how are you feeling since you uh, got back? I'm pretty normal, a little tired, but... He nods. He says, uh, well, uh, you've been through quite an ordeal. It's certainly understandable that you'd still be uh, pretty fatigued. Um... I just uh, wanted to talk with all of you to get some information in regards to what happened on Double Layer 3. Obviously, um, there's a lot of questions that are being asked um, by Slay Industries uh, in regards to that mission. So um, just we'll just kind of go through it and find out whatever we can, and, and then I can relay that info over to them. So just uh, tell me about your experiences there. You know, start as far back as you'd like to. Um, so first off, the, uh, the mission order that we had was really messed up. Um, it said that, and it said that we were like, the division was something about like mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. It seemed sketchy. We were kind of on the fence about it, but once we actually like tried to check everything out, it seemed like it was on the level. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, it was a valid BPN. Unfortunately, there was an error in the terminal, but the information was sound. So we, we do have a copy of that. We have retained that BPN card. So we know what you're talking about. Um, and we got on planet and it seemed pretty straightforward. We were going out collecting samples for the researchers and seeing what we could figure out. Um, so we would do that various days. Um, we did come across some information that we thought they're uh, out of character. Is it Vivatrons? Vivathon. V-E-V-A-P-H-O-N. Okay. So we we did get some clues that there were Vivathons. There were um, some slay tech on there. Um, and there were just some rumors that we had gotten um, just from interacting. We had a brief interaction with some of the locals and they mentioned previous people who had been there um we kind of, we encoded that into a report that we sent back to that got sent back to slay that we figured you would be able to find and encode um and then we started finding out that there was more than there were bigger beasts than just like the small wildlife we had run into there was the, there's this gigantic uh we were calling it a godlike being on the planet. Um, very um, ebb sensitive. Um, we, uh, one of our members figured out that one of the samples was actually sending a distress signal to it. Um, it was coming to attack our base. So we left to go get that sample as far away from the base as possible. Um, we think that might have been a diversion or something because we saw some older slay ship 
then go attack the base. Um, so you saw you saw the ship attack the base. Yeah, I mean, I did. I had night vision, uh, and mm -hmm. I can do the U, uh, UV thing. I don't know how familiar you are with um thing, but I saw a ship mm -hmm. older style. Mm -hmm. This is um so. Is there a reason that you kept the information in regards to the Vevafon from the research team uh, at Camp Terra 15? We honestly just did not trust them. Didn't trust uh, them. Why is that? Off. I mean, personally, they just kind of gave off a weird vibe to me. Um, they weren't very cohesive. Um, everyone seemed to be doing their own thing. Um, the way they were interacting with us, a lot of times they were just having us do work that they honestly they were fully capable of doing um so there was just kind of a, there was between our two teams there just wasn't really a good mesh we didn't know if maybe they were um we, we didn't know if maybe they were trustworthy enough to have that type of information so we just sent it directly to slay what were you afraid uh that they were going to do with the information if you had given it to them Honestly, I don't know. If they had malintent, they couldn't try to cover it up. Cover up the Vavafon information? Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. So we sent it directly to Slay. I see. Uh, he he kind of he pulls up his, his pad here. He says, well, there was uh, certainly some... Um, similar feelings from the research team themselves, at least in terms of um, tension, um, not necessarily suspicion towards your squad, but suspicion that you were suspicious of them, uh, specifically Grealish references, that he believed that you were hiding something from um, them. Uh, and it seemed like they... It seemed like they were at least Reggie, or at least um, Grealish himself, was a bit um, regretful uh, in terms of your squads getting off on on the wrong foot. Um, prior to the attack on the research station, um, was there anything, any other sort of encounters, run-ins you had? Um, this old sleigh ship, um, had you seen it before on the island? Anything like that? Yeah, no, there planet. was some slay tech, mm -hmm. um, some an old uh, console um, in some of the ruins, but we hadn't seen the ship. I see. And did you have any ex interactions with or sight of the Vevafons in question? We had some interaction with the natives, not, not Vevafons. What sort of interaction did you have with the natives? Uh, they jumped us at one point. We tried to cock them down. We tried to find something peace, some type of peaceful re resolution. Uh, one of our members ended up attacking them, though. So uh, that kind of ended talks. Do you believe that the natives were behind the attack on the research station? I wouldn't put it past them. Um, obviously, they wouldn't want us to. They didn't really want us there. Did they express open hostility and an intent to attack you when they spoke with you initially? Uh, when they initially did, um, not really. It was kind of standoff. They got the jump on us, um, which was pretty surprising to us. And then obviously once uh, Fershrek killed one of them. Kind of... Fershrek killed one of them? Yeah. I see. Um, did you believe that the group, both yourselves and the research team, were in, were in any imminent threat from these people prior to this attack happening? Yeah, um, I had personally said that we needed to up any type of shift or any type of shift. Um, I had said a few times that we needed to make sure like communications were stayed in case we needed to get out i personally said that we needed to set watches more have more watches um and we kind of we definitely were were watching the scanners a lot more after that and in these preparations did you you never revealed to the research team why you were so concerned about the security 
thing we told them about when we got jumped. Um, but, I mean, it was pretty obvious. We didn't want anything coming back at us. We were making quite a mess of their local wildlife, taking samples, taking out some of the bigger creatures. You know, it's... And um, on the the final day, uh, when the attack was launched, you uh, you made it back, and by the time you came back to the camp, um, the attack had been completed, and and everyone there was dead except for one member. Were you able to reconvene with him? Uh, no, um, he had taken to the uh, transport vehicle, and I'm assuming fled. Um, and he never came back, which is kind of odd. Do you think it's possible that he was looking for you? I mean, it's pretty standard when you're if you're at the base. I mean, it's it, understandable if he had left for a short period of time, but we were there for two weeks, and he never came back to check to see if we were there. Mm-hmm. So... Do you believe that the the natives themselves launched this attack? And if so, how were they able to pilot a sleigh aircraft when, by the reports from Grealish, he says that they were relatively primitive? I think it was the Vevafrons that probably attacked the base. Um, I don't think it was the natives. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might have worked together. I'm not sure, but... What do you think their motives I mean, was, for attacking the base would have been? I mean, if you were hiding out on a planet and suddenly the people that were looking for you landed on the planet, you'd probably want to take them out. He uh, he kind of leans back against his chair and he pauses and he's like, well, if we were discussing hypotheticals, if I was somebody who was on the planet, and somebody came on the planet looking for me, and I had an opportunity to leave the planet, I would leave the planet in the quietest and quickest way I possibly could. But it seems like they sought out the camp and destroyed it. So it was almost like they had a vendetta, or they were specifically gunning for it to put more attention. They put more attention on themselves by doing this. What do you think the reasoning for that was? I mean, we had figured out that there was something on the planet that it was probably them. I mean, we had already broadcast that by that point. So who knows if they knew we were suspicious and maybe it just just took them a while to find out where we were. Mm -hmm. So the... They wanted to destroy the evidence. Mm Mm-hmm. And do you believe the timing of their attack, was that coordinated in any sort of way with the storm that was reported or the activity of the god monster, as your team has gotten taken to calling it? I mean, I would have to assume, I mean, oh, either that or they were just taking advantage of us being away, all the big guns. Mm-hmm. Who knows if they were watching us, if they had any type of cloaking ability, anything like that. They might have waited for us to leave and... Uh, took advantage of most of the big heavy hitters being gone. I see. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Uh, it's going to be horrible. I'm assuming being pretty doesn't affect this. Um, I roll. Uh, plus three. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, 11, 7, 7. Okay. He, uh, he kind of punches some notes uh, into his uh, data pad um, and uh, he says, uh, so what do you believe, um, do you believe that uh, Reggie, the leader of the group, shared the same um, suspicions about uh, the, uh, the research team that you did? I mean, probably. We were pretty much in agreement that we didn't really trust Grealish. Um, 
a bad vibe off of him. Um, some of the other members were kind of off. Uh, Can Can of Thor seemed just needlessly combative. Mm -hmm. um, Sonara was pretty open whenever we were talking with them, and then Butch was uh, usually pretty good, but it, it was mainly um, Grealish just seemed, I don't know, there was a shady vibe about him. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that that you withheld the information from the team? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, he, uh, he nods and he, uh, gets up from his, uh, from his seat. He says, um, well, uh, all of this is very informative. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Um, I'm going to get some statements from the other members of the squad. He, he kind of motions to the room. He's like, I apologize that the uh, situation here isn't a little bit more comfortable, but if there's anything you need in terms of food, drink, anything like that, just knock on the door and, and um, one of us will, will get you whatever you need. Okay. You can send in some coffee. That'd be good. He says, absolutely. I'll get that to you. Um, he gets up, he walks out. A um, minute or two later, one of his assistants walks in, you know, sets, you, sets down and gives you some coffee. Yeah. And then Patch will sit on the coffee and then kind of just put the head down, the, down on the desk and uh, wait. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so I am going to move on to the next person, so just uh, sit tight. For Shrek. Aye. Uh, so you have been sitting in this room for about an hour and a half now, um, maybe a little bit less, um, and you've heard some conversations happening in the backgrounds. Um, some muffled voices, um, you know, you've probably first heard, um, some faint communication with somebody that sounded like Reggie and kind of his tone matched his, his cadence kind of matched that of, of his and his normal conversations. And then, um, oh yeah, the, oh, yeah. the good hearing merit, I would pick up on that mm -hmm. shit. And then in the room next to you, um, you're pretty clearly here patch, um, talking, but, the thickness of the walls made it difficult for anything to be parsed out in the conversation, but the, um, the tone didn't seem f confrontational or anything like that. Um, so after uh, a little bit of a discussion with patch, um, there's a, a little bit of silence. Uh, and then, um, a few minutes later, a man walks in late thirties, early forties, uh, short Brown hair, a little bit graying, clean shaven, uh, wearing a brown suit, tie, um, carrying a coffee, kind of comes in, sets it down, you know, pulls up the chair, and he uh, he looks at he's got like a like an iPad, like a data pad that he's kind of looking at, at that's got his notes, and he says, uh, "For Shrek, correct?" I. He says, uh, "Nice to meet you. My name is Alan Watts, and I'm the uh, uh, I've been assigned to investigate the situation on uh, Doll Blair Three. Uh, he says, uh, "How are you doing? You thirsty, hungry? Need anything to drink? Need anything to eat?" Mm. Coffee. He says absolutely. Uh, he kind of like gets up and you know goes and has a kind of conversation with one of the interns there or whatever, and he comes in, gets a coffee, same size as his, and sets it down in front of you. Says, uh, "There you go, black." I Boots assume. It. <laughs> Boots it. I assume it's like very piping hot, and he shoots it without blinking. Okay. Um, he, uh, so he, he kind of takes his seat back down. He says, um, so, um, I've been having some discussions with the other members of your squad about the happenings on Dullbar 3. Um, let's, let's hear things from your perspective. Start as far back as you like and just tell me everything that happened. Hey, well. Uh, BPN machine got fucked. Sent us on a BPN for the cream of mushroom soup department. <laughs> yes, we 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 were made aware of the malfunction in the um in the BPN terminal. We've actually since uh, resolved that, uh, but we do have the information about the original malfunctioning BPN that was issued. Space travel happened. Mm -hmm. Met the team down on the planet. Planet was green as fuck. Team or cunts? Team or cunts. Tell me more about that. 
Hey, they're overworked cunts. This is, uh, so they were hostile towards you, or what was the what was the problem? Do you think? Ah, uh, we're we slay ops are fucking up. We all slay ops are fucking arseholes. So you get a bunch of arseholes in in a room together, they start to create friction. Uh, Butch had a nice set of titties. Uh, Go on. That conifer was a big red cunt. So you had some initial uh, issues with the team. Um, did this affect the way that you conducted operations on the planet? Mm, not at all. No. So um, you went through. Um, was there any issues, mistrust, uh, hiding of information on either side? Anything along those lines? I uh, think Reggie wanted to do something. He doesn't trust me much. I'm a shite. Uh. So you think that uh. Re Reggie had some... was looking to do something against the research team? I don't know about against them, maybe. But, eh. Uh, fuck if I, I remember. They were fucking ar arseholes. They got a, they put us in, they put us in danger, had us do all the leg work, which I suppose we were supposed to be doing. Hey, things smoothed out a little, uh, eventually. Okay. So, what, uh, what happened the last day with the attack on the camp? What do you know about that day? Ah, uh, they sent us... We got some tissue samples from a big-ass, uh... Local carnivore. Something about it. Pheromones or some shite. Mm-hmm. The wrong things to the camp, so we got it... Away from the camp. Saw this big fucking arsehole beast. Got it distracted. Got the tissue sample down the river. Go on. Heard some explosions. Gunfire. So you, you heard them, you didn't see them? I heard him. Mm -hmm. Did anyone in the squad see them or make an indication as to what it might have been? I honestly don't remember. We we just rushed back over there. Camp was blown to shite. The radio tower was on top. <sighs> Put out the distress signal and half starved to death waiting. Mm -hmm. Memory's a little fuzzy from withdrawal and dehydration. I see. I see. Something, something about me spinal fluid, like going away and coming back. Mm. So, uh, well, I understand. You know, you've been you've been through a very traumatic experience over the last couple months. Um, but any information that you could. Um, remember about the your time on Dalbler Three would definitely be helpful. He kind of pulls up his no uh, his notepad and he's like, um, "Do you remember any information in regards to Vevathons?" Not that. I thought someone mentioned some something shy about that. Do you know any specifics? Aren't they a big fucking deal? Is that what you were told? and Or is that what you're remembering yourself? That's what I'm remembering. That's mm -hmm. what I'm remembering being told. Let's see. 
While you were on Dullbear 3, did you have any encounters with the native population? I. Tell me about that. Pasty bastards, primitive as fuck. Mm -hmm. We tried to, uh... It was on one of our information gathering duties. Uh... Do you have any interaction with them? Some violence. Some violence. So you had yeah. you had a fight with them. I let them take us in. Tried to get some information on them. Tried to get some diplomacy going. Okay. And things yeah. turned sour, and they, a couple of them had to die. So you you killed how many? Two. You personally or the squad? Oh, me personally. I don't count their kills. I fucking blur. Mm -hmm. Tunnel so, vision. So in the discussions of diplomacy, what did it seem that the, like the natives, what did it seem that they wanted? Ah, oh, they were protecting something. They, something was sacred to them. Not that much. You weren't able to find out what? Ah, uh, wasn't wasn't my business. Uh, word Lonnie got thrown around a lot. Okay. So once you had this altercation with the native people, uh, did you let the research team know what happened? Or I... did you withhold that information from them? No, we let them know what happened. Mm-hmm. And did you feel that it was, um, did you feel that they were a threat to an ongoing threat to the camp? I they could, they could have done some damage, but they see, they either didn't know where the camp was or more likely didn't want to fuck with the camp and mm -hmm. unless they absolutely had to. Mm -hmm. I remember the language expert among the, uh, research team there being d disappointed about not bringing the locals into the fold. Mm -hmm. So in your, um, in your fight with them, were they formidable opponents? Mm. The lo the local two legs. Nah, they were, uh, they were physic. They were in shape, but they didn't have the weaponry to pierce me armor and, Play more went through him like butter. He does. He says so. They're a fairly, fairly primitive tribe of people. Then. Die. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they would have had the knowledge uh, uh, to how on how to pilot an aircraft? Not the ones I dealt with. So what do you think happened there? Ah, uh, maybe they were high. Maybe they were hiding someone who didn't like Slay. He says, um, so if they were doing so, then why wouldn't that person have made themselves clear when you were fighting and killing them? They were busy. Mm-hmm. Um, he pulls up a notepad and he's like, um, I just want to, um, read and get your thoughts on, um, I have some reports here that Grealish, the research team leader had submitted. And I, I pulled a few quotes out, um, in regards to kind of their experiences with your squad. I just want to kind of get your thoughts on each of them individually, if you would, uh, you know, kind of entertain me. Uh, so the first one we had here is the new squad arrived today to assist us with navigating the trials and tribulations of the planet. There's a little tension between them and the research team. Uh, hopefully we can work past that and get on the same page. Uh, we'll need to if we want to survive and prosper here. That was his first entry. Second entry. Uh, after an expedition, squad RRPR had an altercation with Conathor, who I believe is the Shaktar, who was assigned um, kind of guard duties for their for their team. He takes his orders very seriously, uh, and the squad resented the fact that he would not assist them. I understand their frustration, and we'll try to smooth things over. 
Uh, the next one we had here was some days later. I sense that Squad RRPR is hiding something from me and the rest of the research team in regards to their findings on Doll Blair 3. Uh, I can't be sure as to what, uh, but they frequently speak in hushed tones in corners of the station when we are not around. Uh, I'm unsure what caused them to be this combative with their fellow slate workers, uh, but we all have skeletons in our closet here. I can only hope that it's nothing that's going to compromise the mission or our safety. And then uh, the final thing we had here was, early today I had an unusual run-in with Reggie, the RPR squad leader. He was insistent on personally sending a report back to Mort Central and seemed to want to do so in private. I was able to defuse the situation, but it's only contributed to the suspicion that the group is hiding something. Um, says, uh, what do you think of, of that information? Seems like some dorky lot who just want us all to get along. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your relationship with your own squad. Um, so it seems like you were kind of kept in the dark about what was going on. Is that correct? Do they not communicate to you what they were finding, the information that they had come across? Or were you, were you in cohesion with your unit? I was, in, I was within cohesion with my unit and matters that had kept us all alive. So they didn't tell you, your squad didn't tell you everything, only things that were important to combat? Ah, combat. Most of, a lot of our time was, you know, griping about the other, about the other squad mm -hmm. there and uh, theories on the creatures that are around. But not a lot of discussion about the Vevafons. Nah. Mm -hmm. uh, my feet. I. I'm not too good at um, distractions. So, after a couple, after a failure, with distractions during the creeping Jenny case, I kind of. I guess they didn't want me distracting them and in on it. If that's a thing. Okay. Do you have any reason to believe that anybody within your squad would have done anything to conspire with enemies of Slay Industries like these potential Vevafons, the locals, or any other groups that may have been on the planet? No, oh, fuck no. No? Okay. No. We know that... We know that Slay pays best. Mm-hmm. And all of the information that you withheld from the research team was in the name of, um, because you didn't trust them. Is that correct? I, we didn't really trust them much and they all died as soon as things were starting to get smoothed. Mm -hmm. What do you think they would have done with that information if you had told them that you were concerned about the reason that you withheld it from them? If you had told them that you had heard something about there being some sort of connection between the natives and Vepifons, what do you think they would have done with that that would have compromised the mission or put yourselves in danger? Ah. Uh, this case scenario... We all probably would have had a meeting about it. Worst case scenario. I imagine... They... The war veteran and the stealthy one over there would have had started arranging accidents for us. Kept that information to themselves. What do you... How would they have benefited by keeping that information to themselves? Do you think they had some sort of personal gain for it? Uh, anyone anyone who wants to be that far away from society has some reason they don't want to be there what was your reason they were a lot what was my reason yeah my reason was a BPN but they were higher ranking slay ops so so you know nah. you don't think it's possible they could have just 
could have just been a job to them like it was a job to you? Nah. Hmm. Okay. Shifty bastards. Uh, for sure, give me a persuasion roll. Oh, I am going to fail this. <laughs> <laughs> We're all dead. Alrighty. Um, that's charisma, right? Yes. So it'd be that plus your persuasion skill plus charisma for the bonus. If you don't have anything in persuasion, then you would just, yeah, you'd roll uh, 2d10 and you would add your charisma into that. Well, there here goes luck pool. And I am going to re-roll that one. Okay, so that's the skill die successes. Or the skill die. You're you're spending a luck point to re-roll the skill die. Yeah. Okay, what's I your mean, bonus? I got, uh two. That's okay. an eleven. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. Another luck. All right, that's uh, 11 on the check die. Okay. Well, this is how I die. <laughs> uh... mm. Okay, uh, he... He looks up and he says, okay, thank you for the information. Um, he says, uh, if there's, if I can get you another coffee or anything else, um, just knock on the door. Um, we'll have one of our interns get it to you. I just need to collect some statements from the other members of your squad. And then, um, and then you'll be all done. Have a good afternoon. Uh, before I leave, any final statements, anything else you want me to consider for the record? That was a weird fucking planet. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, he gets up, he walks out. Uh, you're left in the room while he continues his statements. So I'm going to go ahead and block you off now, and uh, we're going to move on to click next. Click. Yes. Um, all right. So you've been sitting in this room for about two hours, uh, now, um, you know, it seems like it's probably been a lot longer than that. And in the background, you can kind of hear some muffled, um, some muffled discussions, um, back and forth. You kind of hear the voices of the other members of your squad, but you really can't tell what's being said. Um, specifically, um, you know, you can just hear, hear the words or you can just hear the kind of cadence of the conversation. Um, yeah. so after a while, a man walks in, uh, wearing a brown suit, um, late thirties, early forties, uh, short brown hair kind of has some, um, tinges of gray, uh, in it, uh, clean shaven, you know, kind of, uh, pretty well kept, um, you know, has a pretty, um, pretty approachable kind of demeanor and look to him. Um, he's, um, holding a coffee in his hands, uh, as he sits down across you, he says, uh, he has a, like an iPad, like a data pad with his information on there. He looks at it quick. He's like, uh, Clifford Shrem, correct? Um, he kind of like, looks across um at your 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 silence not saying anything oh, can you can you not hear me i didn't at that second oh, i can sorry. now <laughs> i was like yeah, no, no, wow no. <laughs> you're fucking stonewalling him <laughs> okay no, no, I, I say correct okay <laughs> um this is uh but uh you prefer to be called click right yeah uh, sort of a badge of honor Okay, no problem. Um, my name's Alan Watson. I don't have any interesting nicknames, um, but I've been assigned to uh, investigate the incidents on Dalblair 3. Um, so I've talked to some of your squad members already, so um, just wanted to get your statements on kind of your whole time there and 
and what happened in regards to the attack. Um, so just, you know, relax. Just tell me what you know. Um, coffee, anything to eat beforehand? Coffee would be fine. Sure. If you're offering. Absolutely. Um, he kind of, like, gets up and, you know, calls out the door. A um, moment later, the intern kind of brings in a coffee. Um, he kind of sets down with some, like, sugar packets and things like that for you. Um, he says, uh, how, how have you been feeling since coming back to Mark Central? Happy to be back. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to come to terms with what happened, but, I mean, the world's a harsh place. I mean, the universe is a harsh place. We all know that. Mm-hmm. So, um... Tell me about your experience on Dobler Three. You know, start at the start at the beginning, and then we'll you know just kind of work our way through the timeline. Okay. Uh, well, anything specific you'd like to know? Whatever you think is important. Well, uh, we get on planet. Um, I mean, everything seems normal. I was kind of excited to get into this. I've never really seen that kind of stuff in person. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, they seemed pretty normal. I mean, some of them were kind of weird, but not in a suspicious way. I mean, except for, you know. Go on. Uh, well, uh, the the Shaktar uh, on on the squad was kind of weird right from the start. Didn't really seem like he was part of the team. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, I mean, we, we went out and collected some samples for them. We we uh, killed a couple of the fauna in the area so they could study them. Uh, it's going pretty well. And then, um, and then what happened? I had a bad day. I got a little li lippy, and the Shakdar threatened to kill me. Um, so I kind of stayed out of his way for the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that one was on me. Any, um, experiences or interactions with the, um, native people on the planet? Can't say I recall. So you didn't have any, any direct interactions or experiences with them? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Is there any point during your expedition where you lost consciousness or would have any blank periods? Yes, actually. Uh, uh, one of the squad members um, made some kind of liquor from uh, the, the local flora. And uh, that night was strange. We ate some of the meat from one of the the fauna that we killed um it was a small one so it didn't kill any of us uh but it was kind of like eating a battery and i'm not lying when i say my shit glowed in the dark for three days <laughs> says uh so other than the Shakhtar um member of the research team you didn't your squad didn't have any friction with any other members of the research team no they were friendly enough mm -hmm. i mean a little rude here and there, but uh, they're grizzled. It happens. I see. This is, um, did your squad have any experiences or interaction with, um, or information about Vevafons on the planet? I had never even heard of them until, uh, Archie brought it up. Some kind of something he remembered. So what was even... what was the context of that? Did you have some sort of interaction running with them, or no? Uh, I, I don't. Rec we were just talking about. I think he knows a lot about Slay history. Mm -hmm. But nothing in the context of this planet that would have made you think that they had anything to do with you there. Not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um. He, uh, he looks at his, his pad, um, and he says, um, what was your relationship, what's your relationship like with the leader of the squad? Does he brief you on all the information about what's happening, or does he keep things to himself? Reggie? 
Mm -hmm. As far as I know, he, he briefs us on everything. I mean, he's he's sometimes to a fault, uh, you know, gung ho into team teamwork and mm -hmm. squad togetherness. Okay, so he he's open book, shares everything with you. Doesn't doesn't use a lot of hierarchy. Doesn't you know have a chain of command uh, there. I haven't noticed a pecking order. Mm, okay. No, oh, I shouldn't have used that as a purchase. <laughs> That's a piece of bird. Um, says, uh, d did he express any distrust or uncomfortableness with the squad, um, the research team? Yeah. Uh, he, he, he was a little bit suspicious. Um, I think because he couldn't relate to Grealish. Mm. And it, it raised his hackles, so to speak. Um, I think he did some snooping, and he couldn't even find a file on Grealish. I see. So he was trying to look up information on the research team. Yeah, he just had, I don't know, some bug in his, his brain about, I don't know, they were hiding something from him. Mm. Did you Did you think that was the case? I don't know. I mean, they didn't brief me on everything. They kind of... Mm -hmm. acted a little bit annoyed with me when I tried to get, you know, to help out, but I didn't think anything of that. Mm -hmm. And did Reggie... Did Reggie instruct you or intimate that he was withholding any information that, that you or squad had gained from the research team? Mm, I... Can you repeat the question? Yeah, did Reggie tell you to withhold any information, or did it make it seem like he was withholding any information from the research team? Mm. Hmm. All right, let's start with what he told you. Did he instruct you to do that at any point? Nope, I received no instructions. I see. Of that nature. Hmm. So there was no, in to your knowledge, no secrets being kept between your squad and the research team. Uh, hmm. I don't recall. Hmm. Uh, give me a persuasion check. One second. Got it. Oh, what's the bonus plus, to that? Plus six. Okay. Um, so he, uh, he, he leans back against the chair and he's, he's a little bit confused. Um, he says, well, um, there's, there's a little bit of a discrepancy between what you're telling me and, and what, what Reggie had disclosed. He said that, um, Number one, he didn't express any distrust in, in the other team. Um, however, he did um, intimately detail an interaction that you had as a squad uh, with the locals, with the natives. Um, and further conversations with other members of your squad indicated that there was violence and, and bloodshed and death uh, with those people. Uh, and that those people were connected to Vevathons on the planet. So what... Uh... Now I remember... Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about that. Well, um, as a squad, uh, I believe uh, there was some distrust, and it may have been related to Condothor's behavior. I'm not really sure. Um, I think the idea was to notify Slay when we got off planet and distance ourselves from that squad. Okay. And what about your run-in with the natives? Do you remember anything about that? They had Slay Tech. Mm. They didn't mention Vebifons. I had no idea. Uh, they mentioned the three. Archie remembered the what Vebifons were later. We, you know, we weren't sure, but we had our suspicions. What made you tie the locals to Vebifons if they did not specifically reference them in your interaction with them? Well, we weren't sure, but like mm. I said, they, they mentioned the three. They had 
old Slay Tech. I'm That's talking it. old Slay Tech. And mm. Archie remembered a story about three that escaped. I don't even know. I, I've never heard of them, like I said. I mean, until, you know, they tried to kidnap us. So they tried to kidnap you, and uh, then that led to the fight. And then, um, and then your squad mate for Shrek killed two of them. That was a lie. That was a lie. I don't, I don't know why they decided to lie about that, honestly. Uh, he, he found some small animal, got blood on his sword. Uh, I, I told him that it was, it was probably a bad idea to lie about that because, I mean, their whole research thing was, was based on, you know, uh, contact with them. But that's, that's what they went with, and I, I'm not the leader. <laughs> uh, I was outnumbered. Didn't mm -hmm. really come to a vote, but they all felt that was the best course of action. I see. So tell me about the night of the attack. Um, what were the events that led up to that? Well, uh, the the natives had said that there was a monster. Um, I'm sure you've you've heard you know reports about that. Uh, that comes around any time the environment is damn is is hurt. I guess I don't know. They, they had some you know mystic shit about it, but uh, we had gone on a hunt with uh, one of the other squad members uh, early that morning. Um, because there was a, a large animal, um, uh, and they wanted to study that. So, uh, once that happened, we brought some samples back to the base. Uh, the, the big storm came, and, and we think the storm was either controlled by or, or somehow caused by the monster. Uh, and I think... I think it was the Evan that figured out um, that it was kind of like a a beacon, like it, it attracted it somehow. Everything Eb was in everything on that planet, so we had to get it out of the base. Obviously, this this monster was going to come and crush it. So uh, Archie volunteered to run because the Shaktar didn't want his uh, precious crawler to be destroyed. Uh, so we ran it a mile out, throw it in the river, um, and I mean this thing found us. It, I mean it found it found the meat. Uh, it was big. It was scary. But after it left, a, a, a ship land or no? We 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 see a, a guy in sleigh armor, and he flags us down and he says, "Hey, we've been looking for you." We're the, the rescue team, so, I mean, we're all frazzled. It's There's a huge storm going on. We follow them, get into the ship. It's an old, rickety ship. And as soon as the door closed, we kind of figured out the mess we were in. And it was them. I, I think that's that's what Archie said. That's what the, They were the Vevafons. They wanted to sell us on Scorch to buy their, their way, you know, into anonymity. So that's where they went. And they were the ones who launched the attack on the research station? Yeah. How'd you escape? Reggie negotiated our release. How did he, what were the terms of the negotiation? Uh, he told them we wouldn't say anything about seeing them. Mm -hmm. And if they would just drop us off forget we existed and, and just leave the planet and at any point was there any information divulged about the location of the camp or did it seem like they knew that already I think they knew it already mm -hmm. so uh, did it occur to you at any point to attempt to apprehend disable oh, yeah. and kill no. no believe me it did I wanted to shoot those bastards, but, I mean, they were created by Slay, right? That's what Archie said. Uh, I, I wasn't going to fucking get killed trying to do that. I was just going to give the information to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know how strong they were. 
So did they destroy the... Did they attack the facility before or after they let you go? After. Okay. So... What was the... What was the leverage that Reggie used? He said that he he said set us down, will you know will we'll forget we'll, you were. What was that? He said we'll forget you were here. Mm -hmm. I mean that was never the plan, but right. And what was the alternative for if they didn't do that? They had you on their ship. They had us as bargaining chips. Mm hmm. That's what so, they said. but what were they, what was the, you know, so under negotiation, it was, you know, do give us what we want and we'll do this. But if we don't, then this will go badly for you. The Bevafons could have just left with you. What was the, what was the threat that you were holding over them that prevented them that put you in the position to bargain at all? I guess is what I'm asking. I don't know, man. They went native. Like maybe Reggie appealed to their scent, their, you know, sense of empathy or something. Mm hmm. And you had not had any sort of experience or knowledge um, specifically of these Vevafons prior to this them. encounter? Never heard of them. Okay. And your Reggie had not mentioned that to you at any point or anything along those lines? Reggie didn't know about them either. Archie was the one that, that, that remembered the story. Mm -hmm. But they had no reason to believe that they were on the planet. Uh, I mean, no proof. But they, like I said, they had Slate Tech. Where else are they going to get that? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Um, how was your, um, how was your relationship with the other members of the group? Do you believe that any of them would have done anything to conspire with, uh, these enemies of Slay Industries or to... Um, put yourselves, the research team, or Slay Industries property in danger? Aside from Conathor, no. Like I said, they were, they kind of, you know, acted like the, the seniors to our freshmen mm -hmm. um, sometimes, but they were nice enough to us. They didn't give us any reason okay. to think they would do that. What about within your own squad? I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. So there's no uh, no information you have about any of them that would make you believe that they might have done something or no well, hostilities or anything along those lines. Or Shrek wants to kill me, but does he? It. I'm pretty sure. Okay, why do you believe that? I don't know really. Do you believe that he would have conspired with anybody to? attack the facility or no no, no not him mm -hmm. just me that's that's it i see i see he nods he's like okay well thank you for the information um this has been very informative i will uh i've just gotta finish up talking to the rest of your squad um if there's anything else you need another drink anything to eat anything along those lines just uh knock on the door and, and we'll get you what you need and hopefully it shouldn't be too much longer. Thank you. It says, uh, before I go, is there anything else you want to say, can think of, want to want put on the record? I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but Conathor wasn't present with the crawler mm -hmm. when we, when we made it back to base. Uh, so that was kind of weird that he knew to leave. Okay. Thank you. Yep. He, uh, he gets up, he walks out. Um, so he leaves you in the room, um, and, you know, he, he moves along, um, and you can just kind of hang out. Uh, Archie's got to pee, hopefully he's back. So I'm going to move on to him next. Archie, you back? Okay. Guess he's not. <laughs> so 
so we'll chill out here a little bit. So, I guess this is just time for me to talk with the people at home. What do you think so far? Four stories that are... Oh, we back? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, welcome back. Okay, um, so after a couple hours, two and a half, maybe three, um, honestly, it's a little tough to keep track of time in here. Um, you, um, you know, you kind of hear some muffled conversations that take place um, among the different people um, in your squad. You can kind of hear, like, you can hear their tones of voice, their cadences, but you can't exactly make out what they're saying, but you know that they're being talked to. Um, none of the conversations sound particularly confrontational or hostile. Um, it's just somebody talking to somebody else. Um, and then after, you know, a pretty long period of time, um, the door opens up, the guy walks in, um, late thirties, early forties, um, wearing a brown suit with a suit and tie, um, dressed, dressed nicely, clean shaven, um, brown hair, little kind of flecks of gray in it here and there. Um, you know, pretty, pretty cordial demeanor overall. Um, he's carrying a cup of coffee in his hand. He sets it down in front of you. Um, he says, uh, he says, uh, hi, my name's Alan Watson. Um, uh, I've been assigned to investigate your particular case. Um, he says, uh, Archer, right? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, that's my name. Archer Hamamoto. I understand Hamamoto. you go by Archie, though? Uh, yeah, if you, if you want to do that, that's fine. Well, that's what you prefer to be called. I have no problem with that. Um, he grabs a seat at the table. Um, he says, uh, how are you feeling since you've been back? Okay? Better. Uh, mm -hmm. The last couple of weeks were pretty rough, but uh, starting to feel a little bit better back home. Well, back here, back in Mort. And uh, yeah, I'm not starving anymore, so that's good. <laughs> is excellent um speaking of that is anything i get you to get you to eat i mean here's a coffee i don't know you know if you like it a certain way or not but um something to drink something to eat anything before we get started okay okay i'll I dip coffee though like uh yeah thanks mm -hmm. no problem um he you know he pulls up his data pad he's like so this was your first mission with squad rpr correct uh, it was my first mission ever. Mm hmm So uh, fresh, fresh out of me. Out of me. Yep. <laughs> Says, uh, it's hell of a hell of a first mission for you. Yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of action. Mm hmm Says, um, so, you know, before we get started about the goings on in Dull Blair 3, what were your, what were your initial thoughts of the squad you were assigned to? Well, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have any other experience with other squads, but, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, they seem like, uh, they pretty well put together. I mean, they weren't phased by what was going on too bad. Uh, we kind of got thrown into this mission kind of by accident, but everyone was, I, I didn't know what to do. So I kind of just took their lead. Like, uh, you know, they're like, all right, we're doing this crazy off world mission. I'm like. Okay, I guess that's what we're doing. I mean, it's, uh, they didn't seem too alarmed or nervous or anything like that. So I assume they were, uh, you know, pretty pretty well versed in the uh, the art of slay, as it were. Mm -hmm. He nods. He says, um, and um, you know, in in kind of going through your initial experiences with them, it seemed like it was. Did it seem like there was kind of like a pecking order or a hierarchy, or was there any? Your resentment, hazing uh, on you for being the new guy, anything along those lines? I mean, and it was clear to me that Reggie is the uh, the leader. She kind of gave me, or he kind of gave me, uh, you know, like the rundown of what happened and what happened with their former squad mates that ended up ended up dying. And I, you know, I I, I didn't really know anything about them, but uh, Reggie kind of gave me the the rundown. So that's the leader, and then. I mean, everyone had kind of roles. Like it seems to me, like for Shrek is the, he's the strong man. He's this, he's the, uh, the fighter, and uh, Patch is, you know, our abuser, our our, our whiz kid, you know. 
and and Perry uh, Patch, not Patch. Did I say Patch already? Yeah. Uh, is uh, is kind of the uh, he's kind of an enigma. Uh, you know, he's I don't know. He, he's a, he's very confrontational is sometimes, he? but uh yeah, sometimes he bites off a little more than he can chew. It seems like, but uh, do you have any examples of that? Oh man, I, I mean, there was uh, one of the guys in the. Uh, expedition crew was a uh, ex-war uh, veteran, and he he picked a fight with the Shaktar. <laughs> but, so uh, you think that uh, Click was the one who kind of instigated that a little bit? Well, well, I mean, guys are rough around the edges, but I mean, it seemed clear to me that you don't really talk back to him because mm-hmm. he's uh, he's seen some shit, you know. <laughs> But uh, I clicked in and have that filter. But I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that he he didn't fight him. I mean, I don't know. Really, I don't know. It was it was just weird. I, I think he's trying to break his balls, but uh, you know, <laughs> the Shaktar didn't really take it that way. <laughs> so, what were your overall impressions of the research team on Dalblair Three? I mean, did you get along with them? Was there? I mean, obviously, other than that particular instance between click and conathor was there any other tensions or anything like that i never had any issues with them Mm -hmm. i mean they i gotta assume that like uh squad meets squad there's always like a little bit of uh static like we're trying to be awesome and you're trying to be awesome and it's a it's a world where everybody's trying to get theirs you know so but i I never had an issue with them. I never, uh, they never really came after me or anything like that. You know, they were just trying to do their jobs and we were trying to uh, do our jobs. And that was kind of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, did anybody, um, within your squad express any distrust in the research team? I don't, I guess so. I mean, I don't think, I think that um, the members of uh, Raka Raka put Raka definitely uh, are hard pressed to trust anyone. I think that's by design. Like, and through some, they've they're veterans now, right? They've been to a bunch of missions, you know. So I, I think that's just part of, I guess, my perception of being an operative is that you don't necessarily trust people before you get to know them and we had only known them for a week two weeks three weeks however long it was so i I don't know that it was out of character but it was definitely like everyone was really cautious everyone was uh not easy to trust but that's not necessarily a you know sociological problem it's just that just you know get burned once it's harder to trust the guy next time you know uh, so during your time there, did you receive any communications or orders from others in your squad to withhold information from the research team? Did I? Mm-hmm. Uh, there any orders? No. Um, it was clear to me that we the, we, were, we were met with a situation where uh, if we told the research team we could danger the mission and if we didn't uh then we we might be okay that was kind of it, w- it wasn't that there were orders it's just there was like very real consequences to doing so so it was like consequences from whom uh from the the malcontents that we found uh, the, there were some people living on the planet that weren't the research team uh or some i don't know what you would call them uh I guess natives, uh, mm-hmm. and they made it clear to us that uh, they didn't want the research team knowing they were there. So we were met with a decision to either tell the research team, which the consensus was we didn't really trust what they were doing, or and and possibly uh, destroy our only way home, or our communications with uh, with Slay, or kind of just keep it a secret and everything was status quo and. We, that's kind of what we chose. So what information were the natives looking for you to withhold from the research team? Their, their whereabouts, 
and what was on the planet, or what is on the planet. Mm, what's that? Well, uh, our findings were that there is a high level of flux, mm -hmm. like, a, like a crazy amount of flux. Uh, like when we tested samples of um, creatures, uh, animals we found and fought and and took back, uh, they I think broke the computer. Which, uh, I don't really know how that works, but uh, the data, the the readings were so high that the uh, the instruments broke or they were over overloaded. Was there anything else on the planet of interest that you think that the natives are looking to protect? He, he, Archie was like, listen, man, like, I, I gotta tell you, like, I don't really know, like, I know I'm supposed to tell you, but I, I don't know how to, like, eat a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, he kind of laughs nervously. Uh, Just having a conversation here. We found something of interest to company, for sure. Um, it... I don't know if you're familiar with the... They're like an old science project from Slay. They're like... Uh, Vevafons, Vevo yes. Yeah, so there were three of them on the on the planet, and they were hiding out from Slay, which is one of the reasons why they threatened to destroy our communications if we were to uh, blow in Slay about their whereabouts. Um, and the, the, a lot of us kind of figured that, like, we just wanted to get off of the damn rock. Like, I mean, and so, kind of why the research team was unaware of them. Um, yeah, we, we, we encountered them, for sure. Like, they they didn't want anyone to know they were there. But, I mean, I don't know. I, so you I, encounter I like the Vevafons? Yeah, yeah, we definitely encountered them. Um, they Tell me about that encounter. So, I think we... I think we encountered them twice or we encountered I, I can't remember if the first time we encountered one of their because they they kind of like befriended the indigenous people that were there so i can't remember if we encountered one of them or actual vevavon but they can shape change i think so it, it it's kind of arbitrary um yeah so the first time they, they basically were like listen don't tell anyone we're here or we'll fucking mess with your stuff uh well we'll mess with your stuff sorry uh, the record mm -hmm. um but uh and then the second time they uh came after us um as like a ruse like they uh, pretended to be an extraction team of slay operatives um which was kind of a shaky ruse but we we encountered them they had a ship which they used to leave the planet it had been i guess working on it the whole time and it finally got operational and so um yeah, they were like, "Listen, we're you. You got to come with us." Blah blah blah. The extraction team and we're kind of like, "Yeah, your ship's real old, and like, we know you're. Uh, you know, we didn't receive word that we were leaving yet. So, and like, how the fuck did you get here? Uh, how how did you get here so fast? You know, like it took us two weeks to get here, and you're. You know, it was like a matter of of days or something that they turned up. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot of a lot of. Uh, questions they couldn't answer um that that encounter was was pretty wild so did you get on to the ship that they were asking you to get on yeah we we boarded the ship uh it um i mean we could tell oh well, i'm not you know i don't really travel through space very often uh, i've only done it a few times but uh i mean it was obviously the ship was in some disrepair compared to the ship that we had in there mm. um, and I mean project states that they must have taken a ship to this planet and it was probably old since they've been there for a while so it was probably the you know escape ship that they had um, and eventually they came to a head where um, a lot of us had to make a decision on what to do so they they wanted to leave uh, and didn't I mean I, I, I don't want to say that I'm not you know didn't have any say in what was going on. That's not true, but I'm a new guy, so I tried to defer to everyone else's judgment on what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I thought we should just let him go because 
I didn't think we could fight them, um, which is probably the wrong thing to do, but, uh, you know, that, that kind of a threat should be probably neutralized, but, um, uh, we're on their turf, we don't know what kind of surprises they have, they're, you know, basically, uh, I mean, I, they were scary to me, I guess is the answer I would give you. Mm-hmm. And how did you get off the ship once you were on there? Um, well, we had a conversation with them, and they we came to an agreement, uh, and they left, and we got off the ship. We didn't fight them. So what was large. the agreement? <laughs> uh, so basically, they, they took out the base. Mm-hmm. Um, so they did so that the, while you were on the ship? No, no, no. We had we had gotten off of the ship, uh, and they shot up the base, and then they took off. Okay. So, what was the agreement? Basically, we let them go, and they. Oh. They lured you onto the ship. They had you where they wanted you to be. So, what convinced them to let you leave? I, ah, uh, man. I guess. I don't know. Maybe they were as afraid of us as we were of them. And then why did they confront you in the first place? I don't know. I, I think they wanted us to be fooled, and then we would go with them, and then they could handle us at a later date. Mm-hmm. Or maybe thought they could use us as a bargaining chip, as hostages. Um, And then when we kind of figured out that I guess as long as we were going peacefully, it seemed to me that the, uh, well, I guess I should, I should back up. So uh, in their plan, if they were going peacefully, if we were going peacefully, then like everything's cool. And then eventually once they figured out how to handle us, they would use us as a bargaining chip. But once they, we figured out or like blown in that, like these guys are the Vevafons, then, uh, you know they couldn't do that anymore so they instead of fighting us they i guess they you know they're like listen we'll let you go and uh you know you let us go and you know. and then they're like yeah and don't tell anybody but i'm like mm-hmm. come back to come back to more and uh you know stop me dude like <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> mm-hmm. so at any point during your interaction with the Vevafons, did you have any inclination that they were going to attack the research camp? Well, I mean, previously they mentioned blowing up the communications, which I wasn't sure how they were going to do, but that, but uh, and it stands to reason, at least to me, that the reason why they did it was because then we would have a hard time contacting you guys, uh, the company, and then they would have more time to run. So, like, we had, a, I think, a week or two left on our our, uh, our trip. So, like, I don't know if they knew that or not, but, like, basically, we couldn't radio back to base. So, the time we got everything sorted out and they was able to act, it would be much longer because they didn't, we didn't have a way to communicate what was happening. So I think that's why they did that, and they took it out. I don't know how you know, accurate their weapons are, that they just, you know, can wreck the whole base, but, it's, yeah. He he kind of, he, he squints, he's like, see, that's, it's funny that you mentioned the communications tower, because that was basically the only thing that was left intact when they launched that assault on the base. Now, considering they had threatened to destroy them before, don't you believe that they would have ensure that that was destroyed yeah so man I, I i'm gonna come clean with you here like i don't like really afraid to tell you what actually happened because it's pretty bad like uh, I, hate to, I hate to like make shit up but I'm, I'm pretty afraid to tell you like what went down because it's it's pretty bad who are you afraid of the consequences of it like I don't know that I really had a choice in what was going on, but we, 
he kind of looks around the room at like what cameras are up there. Mm -hmm. There's <laughs> definitely like, a camera. I mean, like again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, like, like, you're definitely being watched. Looks, yeah. looks right into the camera, like, uh, fuck. <laughs> and then uh, he's like, "Listen, like we just we basically made a deal that like they let us go and take out team in the base." And that that's the deal we made. I'm like, I'm sorry I led you in another direction there, but like honestly, like I don't know. I guess I guess it's better to just tell you what happened. But it's it's, it's I don't know how to spin it in a way that doesn't look as bad as it is. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Who made that deal with them? I guess we all did. Um, I didn't really. The deal was made and no one objected. I, you know. Okay. Was there anybody who was that something that the Fevafon suggested to you, or was that something that was brought up by one of the members of the team? I don't know that. I don't remember. I it's hard to say. I honestly don't remember after I just made up a story. I really don't remember who brought it up. I know one of the group did, but I don't. I don't know. I think maybe they thought that would be a way to like make the deal I, I don't really know but that was that was proposed by us one and it took the deal i guess maybe we thought it wouldn't save the communications without that sort of caveat i don't i don't know but it's, yeah that's that's like the the actuals right so Okay, so somebody suggested it amongst your squad, but you're not entirely sure who. So you negotiated a deal with the Vevafons to, um, for them to release you in exchange for the information about the camp. And uh, in exchange... So what you're saying is one of the squad members had suggested that they attack the camp directly. Yes, I think so. I don't really understand why that was suggested, because my my discretion it seemed like he just decided that like they can't stay here anymore because of, I gotta tell you, man, that that planet is like it's like if a gold mine had a gold mine, it would be that planet, right? Like. There's no way this lay is going to be like, oh, yeah, you guys can hang out there and we'll leave you alone because there's, I mean, it's like an ocean of freaking flux, right? Like, mm -hmm. So I think they realize, like, they can't stay there. Lay's going to come for it. They're going to figure out a way to make it theirs, right? Like, So they had to go. And I think anything they could take with them was a bonus. And they really don't like the company. It seems like they're, I mean, they're renegades. They're, they're on the run from Slay. I guess, I guess, I assume, I'm guessing they were assumed dead. Um, but, uh, they're, they're definitely malcontents, right? So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. I'm sorry. He, uh, there's kind of a, a long pause and, um, he, uh, he's a little bit taken aback. Um, and, and after a bit, he's like, um, do you regret it? I mean, I think I, as a, my, my conscience says I should, I should have be in an attempt to change the deal more than I did. Right. But I, I mean, I didn't pull the trigger, so I, I couldn't have outside of fighting them, which I thought we would just get killed doing. And I still do. Uh, and I guess what I regret is, is um, I'm making a better argument for doing some, making another deal, making a better deal. You know, because I didn't. Those guys were my friends, but they were my enemies. They were just other employees, right? Like a, we had like a, you know, like a, like a work relationship, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't, I don't know. And the uh, the the Shaktar is uh, presumably still on planet. We we didn't find him, so he I think 
he had a the APC that was like his his world. It was weird, like he clung to that thing, and he that thing was gone, and he was gone. So I can only assume that he was in it. The other guys, yeah. I mean, I kind of wish we uh, do them dirty like that. I see. Well, thank you, thank you for the information. Um, this has been very enlightening. Um, he, he gets up and he, he gets up, he turns around, he opens the door, closes it behind him. Um, so now I will let everybody back in. Boop, boop. Bringing everybody back in. Boop, boop. Bringing everyone back in. Bringing mm. everyone back in. Bringing everyone back in. Okay. So now, uh, all of you are in your respective rooms, um, you know, having waited and gone through the interviews and the trials of everybody. Oh. Um, after... I'm you know, sweating like this black guy is sweating. After some... Previous after, you know, time has gone by for all of you. Um, and after, you know... Uh, you know, an extended period of time, um, Archie, obviously yours was the shortest, you know, and kind of going on down, um, a, um, the door opens up and, um, people for each of you, it is a different person, um, brings you from the room. Um, they take you from the room and they lead you down a hallway. Uh, and then they bring you into a room, uh, that is white, uh, featureless white room, no windows, a door that's it um and they put all five of you in there and then they um you know on the way on you know the last one way is it, the last one's way in they just say wait here and then the door closes and the five of you are left to talk with each other hey guys well that was interesting hey guys hey right. uh, it was intense i'm glad they didn't kill any yeah yeah Uh, was uh, uh, crazy. I hope I said the right stuff. As long as you told the truth, it should be fine. Uh, what, how do you guys feel about it? I don't know. I don't know. They're probably yeah, listening know. to us now, so. Oh? Well? I don't know. Oh, okay. Hi. Yeah, this is just like every time I use my claymore. I'm gonna fucking die. Um, well... I hope not. On the plus side, then you won't have to go armor shopping. You guys are... That, that does take that load off my mind. Armor... Getting armor fitted is weird because it's never the right person who does your measurements. It's always someone creepy. You gotta break it in. Aye, and it chafes. So glad I don't have. Like, are you anymore. are you worried about your armor? Well, your armor got completely like Just by another set, right? Destroyed. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, by fucking. If I die, I don't have to go armor shopping, so, you know, you that takes a... you fit into mine. Y you know, uh, I was, I didn't take my drugs, and it was a very desperate situation. I mean, after like two weeks of not eating, it's probably... What did you uh, guys tell him? Told him what happened. I... Know? It doesn't matter that you say it now if they're listening, right? Because you told them. Well, here's something that uh, that I thought of. I haven't had a chance to bring it up to you guys. How do you think Conathor knew to get out of there with the crawler? And why don't you think it came back? Eh. I mean, he was a traitor. I mean, I, I didn't know. trust any of that crew question. to begin with. Nah. I don't. I don't think he betrayed. I don't think he betrayed Slay. I think he's just a paranoid, like cunt who you know was dry humping the fucking, and car when it happened. So he just hopped in and fucked off. He didn't care he about anybody. He never uh, came back, which means he's got to somehow survive out there. Probably 
teamed up with the natives at some point. It is. Yeah. He, he was or he's, hard to or he's a war world veteran. He's out there eating frogs. He was the only one who could I mean, really easily come and go. A, uh, write that off as a coincidence, though. I think uh, uh, I think Click is right. I, I think. I don't think he was a traitor. I think he was just a bastard. I mean, he really only native. cared about like the vehicle, and he was kind of in it for himself. So, in I, the sense that he didn't really. I don't feel like he had much loyalty other than maybe to Slay, but not really to anyone in particular. So he may have just been surviving. He said he didn't want to risk the vehicle to drive us out right. away. It got us like away from the day. Much of a loner? He just... Yeah, what, what are we waiting for? I don't know. Come back and tell us what's going on. They just yeah, want to make a sweat. Uh, it's just like STD results. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after um, after a while, um, of your kind of left to just kind of con converse with yourself, um, you hear like a click, and then like you hear a voice coming through the loudspeaker, which sounds like. Um, uh, Alan Watson, the person you've been talking to, says, Stand against the far wall, please. Stand against the wall. Okay. Well, on the other side, lads. Everybody else goes over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. You walk to the far wall. Um, as you all get there, uh, the door opens and in walks uh, five men uh, wearing crackshot armor, uh, all uh, black, head to toe. Um, they all have very large rifles slung over their shoulders. They walk no. in and they line up uh, the opposite wall, um, holding them kind of in position. Um, the loudspeaker clicks on again and says, <clears throat> Squad Rauka Rauka put Rauka. Uh, based on the findings of the investigation of the incidents on Dalblar 3, uh, we find you guilty of conspiracy to commit destruction of property, conspiracy to commit murder against Slay Industries employees, and treason. Your sentence is death. Squad. That's all bullshit. <laughs> so you call out. Um, squad, ready. Um, the group level their guns up at you. Aim. I Middle run finger. at him. Pop my armor. Middle finger. <laughs> you, who runs at him? Okay. Okay. Um, um, so you get ready to charge, and then um, as you're you you kind of get there, and like as you're um, like you're coming at them, and then there's like a pause, and then you hear hold, and then like you almost think it's for you for a second, <laughs> um, but. Uh, the, uh, the, the, they don't shoot. Um. Oh, I stop, and I'm like. And then I he's. I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> um. And, in the middle of getting <laughs> naked, like, what? <laughs> then the, um, the, um, the voice through loudspeaker says, uh, main, maintain aim. Hang Continues on. Continues to get naked. <laughs> um. She's just. The guy on the other side's like, "This is getting interesting. I want to watch now." <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, after another minute or so, um, the men um, who notices it, Reggie, you would notice it. Um, Archie, you might notice it. They kind of tilt their heads like they're listening to something. Um, and then, um, after another few seconds of this, they all drop their guns, turn, and walk out the door. The door closes behind them. Uh. Did Alan leave too? Alan was never there. He's in. He was speaking over a loudspeaker. Oh. <laughs> For Shrek, why are you naked, man? Rick, Rick faints. Um. Reggie doesn't even think that's weird at this point. He's just kind of like whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I want to save someone extra step. 
Uh, or maybe I want to die wanking it. I don't know what I was thinking. You're probably fine. not I helping just... our case. <laughs> Somehow I didn't notice that. Uh. You don't uh, ask him to provide a distraction. Uh, it works. <laughs> I, I stopped talking because I'm realizing I, I'm being ridiculous. So I had to... <laughs> Uh, so then after um, a few more a few more moments, it seems like hours, um, but it's, you know, a minute or so, uh, the voice comes through the loudspeaker again and says, uh, As a result of your crimes, you have thus been sentenced to be excommunicated from Slay Industries. You will turn in all of your, all of your Slay issued equipment. Um, you will be... Um, you will be evicted from any slay issued housing. You will no longer be able to participate in any slay issued missions from today forward. You are no longer employees of slay industries. He says, um, we will, we will send cloak division officers to your respective homes to confiscate your slay issued equipment, uh, and anything that you were authorized to have access for as a result of your employment with slay industries says, um, I wish you all the best. Click. Why the change of heart? Nothing. Oh, they Nothing. want us to suffer. They want us to suffer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so after, after a while, Uncle uh, um, well, do you, do you, do you all say anything else to each other? Like, fuck, I was only on this for like one job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, lad. You got the bring, short straw. Bring shame There's no to way my I'm family. going back home. Oh, well, I, I guess I'll meet Breton and the boys for one last family reunion. <clears throat> Must be nice. Oh, they're going to kill me with knives. Can see, see if my friend Julian will help us. And his frother bros. They're going to kill me with knives. My friends? Aye, aye, well, frother only, if, only if you stop being racist towards me. No, no, when frothers fuck up, their family handles their apps, so uh, I've got I've got an honor duel to attend to that I'm going to lose. I mean, also, for Trek, you, uh, Slay doesn't confiscate your addiction to their uh, uh, products either, so you're going to have to come up with some money, buddy. I've got an honor duel to attend to. <laughs> okay. So, um... I well um this this uh do we just leave or I well yeah um so the door's still closed for you I go check if the door is locked yes it is well looks like that honor duel is gonna take a while uh <laughs> well uh, I'm offering to help you but if you don't want it then fine. I mean I'll take the help uh. Ah, uh, fuck it. Might as well. I'll give my. Might as well give Bretton a hard time now. He's got. He's got to earn his claymore notch. Okay. So uh, after, um, you know, after another period of silence, the door opens up, and then from what happens here on out, um, is you're all individually led by. Um, cloak division officers to your respective homes um, where they confiscate um, your weapons, your armor, patch that includes your death suit. Um, and uh, any slay issued equipment. Uh, they leave you with the money that you have. Um, they, I don't think anybody, did anybody have like a non-downtown apartment or anything like that? No. Okay. So they leave you in the homes you're in, but the, you know, whether or not you'll be able to pay the rent is going to be a question for another time. Um, they take your badges, uh, and you are officially no longer employees and operatives of Slay Industries. So we're going to end it there. Um, everybody take two experience points. Everybody, no, everybody take two experience points. No third. Um, That's fair. 
So now, <laughs> um, any questions, any discussions, anybody wants to have as far as what this means kind of going forward or what just happened? I uh, messed up. Uh, I did too. Because I thought, I forgot that a success die has to be a success for your skill to work. I was like, oh, other. I then I was reading the book and I realized that and I was like, oop, I'm done. You didn't fail, you succeeded your role. Oh, I thought I failed. Nope. Afterwards, I was like, because oh. I was like, oh, I should have used luck. Nope. Uh, why did they decide not to kill us? That is something that you still don't know. Oh. Uh. Uh, I assume that, uh, Dark Knight's gonna go back to trying to recruit us again. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, job market's a little shallow. Oh, the... still, got the, still got the training. It's looking a little more appealing now than it did before. <laughs> so, at this, so when we pick up the next section, the next session, um, since we are in a pretty humongous transitional period and technically there is no reason for the five of you to stay connected anymore is does anybody want to be another character believe like is there any changes that you want to make as a group because it's totally vi anything's viable now at this point That's a good question. Uh, uh, I've, worked, I've worked very hard at character developing Reggie, so mm -hmm. I don't want to get rid of him. Good, because we just had the care. We just had the drawing made for you. Couldn't you, you weren't you I, didn't have that option, <laughs> boys? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> for sure. I, I'm very much enjoy, like, <laughs> no, that's I, fine. Good. I'm okay. Like I said, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not pushing anybody in that direction. But if you're like, I want to do something else, like I want to do another character, like. You know, now is the time because you don't have anything tying you together other than your own personal relationships now. And I can very easily feed in a new character if need be. Oh, I'm good. Actually, okay. I'm, this character is I'm really well suited for that. Okay, I'm keeping, gonna sleep on it. For sure, I'm keeping my meth head. Patch? Yeah, I'm pretty good keeping Patch. Okay. I'm gonna have to figure out um, what an Eben without a death suit looks like in this yeah, you can't in this do world. Anything. Um, um, there's ways around that, but those yeah, real cards. cards, huh? Yeah, I could get glyph cards. cards if need. If yeah, we know well, where to get, get glyph cards. We know where to get glyph cards. We have. And did we get the? We did not get the two thousand credits for that job. Uh, no, no. Oh. You do, not, <laughs> we did you, do not get, you do not get paid and you do not get, uh, well, the SCL increase associated with it. <laughs> do we know that it's actually the SCL increase? The real I past? wanted the payment. What's that, Reggie? Do we actually know that that was a real task that came through? Or well, if it was, it was a valid, it was 100% valid BPN, yeah. It just the looked wonky for it was the the terminal malfunction yeah. you know all things considered they may, they may not have issued it to a squad of your rank but you weren't yeah. that much you weren't that much lower than one they would have it would probably have been like an scl9 issue mm -hmm. mission under normal the other bird the other bird seemed like such a nice guy in his reports god damn it oh yeah i didn't i did not uh do all of the reports for all of you so this is uh so um Grealish had mentioned some of you in, in his in mentioned you guys in his reports. Um, the new squad arrived today to assist us with navigation, navigating the trials and tribulations of the planet. There was a little tension between them and the research team. Hopefully we can work past that and get on the same page. We'll need to if we want to survive and prosper here. Uh, after an expedition, squad RRPR had an altercation with Conathor. He takes his orders very seriously, and the squad resented the fact that he would not assist them. I understood their frustration and will try to smooth things over. Uh, I sense the squad RRPR is hiding something from me and the rest of the research team in regards to their findings, but they frequently speak in hushed tones in quarters of the station. 
uh, when we're not around. I am unsure what caused them to be this combative with their fellow sleigh workers, but we all have skeletons in our closet here. I can only hope that it's nothing that's going to compromise the mission or our safety. And then the last one earlier today, I had an unusual run-in with Reggie, the RRPR squad leader. He was insistent on personally sending a report back to Mort Central and seemed to want to do so in private. I was able to defuse the situation, but it only contributed to the suspicion that the group is hiding something. So. You told me all that. I told, I did not say that for everybody. I didn't tell, uh, I didn't share that with everyone. Um, so, you know, I just thought I'd, you know, let y'all make y'all you know aware of that um and then any other info that you're looking for um in regards to the dull blair 3 stuff i can kind of declassify and tell you now at this point and i don't think it'll matter the game going forward so if you had any questions about that uh yeah um Uh, can I ask if there was any other result or if that was pretty much how this was going to go, regardless of what we said? Um, there was enough discrepancy in the things that the five of you said that made them suspicious. Um, if, but, well, mm, no, I mean, there was, um, one of y'all just straight up gave, gave the others up, um, but um, if you had all managed to be on the same page or kind of close with your stories, it may have gone a different way. Um, it probably would have not resulted in you completely losing your, um, you know, your, your employment with Slay Industries. Um, but it was a very bad position and... Even it would have been very difficult to talk your way out of it because the the evidence was pretty heavy duty um, in terms of something going fucking wrong, like something fucking up. Um, and they don't take that shit lightly. Um, and really, the biggest the biggest things they were concerned about is uh, letting the Vevafons go, um, which a couple of you made apparent that you had had the opportunity to at least attempt to stop them, and you didn't. Um, and, um, basically, you know, letting them wreck the camp, um, which again, that's just destruction of their property and whatnot. So they're not super happy about the research team either, but that's kind of like the bottom on the list of things that they're mad about. So, um, so it could have gone a little bit differently, but it was just a very, very bad situation for you to be in, in general. Um, any, any other questions? Would we have taken the Vevafons if we decided to fight them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could have beat them in a fight. It, it would have it sucked. You, would've, you probably would have got hurt. Maybe somebody would have died, but it was three on one. They had, you know, they, they had basically, you know, like the the effective the effective melee of like a vibro saber on each of them with their, with their the weapons that they can mold their body into. And they had Fen 603s on them. They were very um, ill-equipped and they had, I think exo armor, which I had said. So like it would have been a fight. You may have risked damaging and or crashing the ship in the ensuing <laughs> fight. Um, but they were definitely beatable. It was my intention all along. You were going to fight them either before the attack on the camp or after the attack on the camp. I had seen it going. I, I had seen it going one of two ways. Um, either you didn't fall for the ruse and didn't get on the ship and then fought them on the ground or you fell for the ruse, got on the ship. You tr they tricked you into, you know, giving away the info for the camp. And then once you saw them attack the camp, you would have fought them. Then you would have, then, then that's where the fight would have taken place. But I had every intention I, of you fighting them. I was thinking of tackling one while the ship was fought flying, but no one seemed to. Eh. I mean, it's a bad it's situation. Not... It's, I mean, it's not, again, there's not a right or wrong here, but you could have uh... fought them. And you probably would have won. And I, I think, again, five on three in any situation, you're probably going to at least come out relatively intact, especially with the, you know, patch were, and, you know, whatnot on your side. I think I was still tripping balls when, when we were talking to them on the ship. So <laughs> even without armor. Right. I don't know. You made them sound like they were pretty. 
they were scary because he never dealt with them before, but yeah. you don't know what that yeah. means. You know, scary. Yeah, I everything here like, is. I thought they were like y'all. Y'all fought a fucking T Rex and killed it. <laughs> like, you know. I thought they'd be like Stormer Captain America. Y'all yeah, have been in. No, I mean Vevafons are again, and you wouldn't have a lot of reason to know this, but Vevafons are not. They're less scary than regular Stormers by a considerable margin. Their, oh. their benefit is not necessarily in combat. It's in their ability to shape change. Um, they're, they have some regenerative capabilities, but they're not even as good as, as regular Stormers, Malice Stormers. Oh, um, okay. So, all right. Yeah. I, I thought they'd be like some kind of ridiculous secret super weapon no like, so the reason that the yeah. so the reason that vevafons were recalled is that they're they're mentally unstable like they weren't easy to control um effectively um they have free will mm, yeah, i mean more so than than other issued stormers you know so that was the reason they were recalled and it wasn't necessarily that they were super strong or super powerful now had you discussed this with the research team, they might have been able to tell you some of this, uh, especially Conathor. Um, but you kept it from them. Oh, damn it. But you kept it from them. And, you know, okay. So you only had the information that you had amongst yourselves. I don't... <laughs> I understand you making that decision based on the fact that you didn't trust them. Um, which there was nothing outwardly malicious about them. Um, they were ultimately on your side. Again, they were dicks, but you're dicks too, guys. Um, so there was well, nothing. Also, also kind of felt bad for the, the planet and was hoping there was a way to end up right. not destroying the planet. Right. Which and is also. I think that was kind of the motivation too. Sure. Which, again, is ultimately taking a motivation against Slay Industries, which is another reason that led to the contribution to your near execution and ultimate release is that again, you, you felt you were doing what you felt was right, but what you felt was right in this particular instance was directly counterintuitive to your employer. So that is, you know, that was the reason that they were again, more mad at you than, you know, because some of their people died. They didn't, you know, particularly care all that much, although some of them were valuable. Grealish was valuable. Conathor is valuable still, if they can find his ass. Um, Wait, guys. We can be a contract-killing team. <laughs> the contract circuit is available to you, as is we're prop work. We're coming to Nigel H. We came up with a bomb angel or whatever. <laughs> Uh, well, that's We're like that's, hatred, that's, I'm gonna eat your ass. <laughs> that's prop work you're thinking of, uh, Reggie. So that is also available to you as well. Uh, you could just work as mercenaries. Um, you can enter the contract circuit. You can fucking work for Dark Knight potentially if you want to. Um, the answer is yes. Was that was that Perry? I didn't say anything. Oh. We could become serial killers. You could become serial killers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sky's the limit, baby. <laughs> So. I, oh, six dig serial killers. Let's do this. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, we can, we can get into the possibilities a little bit later on. Um, any other questions, uh, about this? How powerful uh, was Dr. Manhattan Zilla? Uh, That's it was, it was a, it was a zero stat. Like you couldn't have killed it. There's no possible way. Um, if, uh, in the event that you had taken the APC, um, almost certainly, uh, the creature would have, um, destroyed the APC, probably killed Conathor, um, maybe we killed you inside of it, uh, maybe <laughs> yeah. killed you inside of it, um, because it was, the thing that saved you from that is that you're ants, basically, and it just, like, it, if it saw you, it was going to go for you, but it kind of lost track of you easily if you weren't making a lot of fucking noise. Luckily, nobody shot at the thing or threw a bomb at it, because that explosive wouldn't have done fuck all to it. Um, it yeah, it would have just, it was, it was just a, it was a zero stat, like, it would have just wrecked your shit if you even remotely tried to fight it. It would have killed you very easily. All right. Well, we did. Next next session, we gotta get started doing prop work and bounty hunting again, and uh, I gotta start training to be a contract killer. <laughs>
Any other questions? Was there any other files that we could have looked up that I didn't get to? Uh, there was a file on everybody but Grealish. Um, I don't remember which off the top of my I head. Think I, I think I saw them all, but I don't remember. I think maybe the only... Did you see Butch's? No. So, all right. So, Conathor, five, five, five confirmed friendly kills on Dante. Uh, Grealish... Oh, oh, that's right. Um, so Grealish was the only one that you didn't have um, a file on. Um, well, there was a file. It was just very difficult to find. Uh, his secret was that he previously worked on a eugenics program that experimented on the people of Arentia. Um We killed a Nazi. I'm, we killed a Nazi and <laughs> sent to the planet. Sonora, uh, again, she had a, a, a multiple personality disorder, a second personality, Alana. If... Um, if Sonora had eaten that sample from the the other dino you killed, she would have immediately fallen into that state and it started attacking all of you. Um, Caleb's secret in massive debt took position on Doll Blair 3 to avoid collectors. I think you got that one. Yeah. Um, Butch, uh, there's, her secret was blind in one eye due to birth defect assigned to Doll Blair 3 due to insubordination and striking a superior. I know oh, I like no, Yeah, I didn't have that one, but that makes sense. Uh, Renmarn. Um, I can't. I killed my soulmate. Renmarn was the only uh, was the only one who had no information in the database on them at all. Um, they were a ghost, effectively. Oh, well. We didn't really have much interaction with Renmarn. Not a lot. He was a quiet yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, he was being... And we have no way of knowing if Slay's gonna continue to strip the planet and all that stuff. Oh, they're definitely gone. <laughs> oh, they're, they're gone sir. No fucking question. Um, because Grealish, you did, they knew about the increased dev activity. And that alone is gonna be enough for them to, um, continue their research on the planet. Um, it's probably gonna be real costly for them. And they're probably going to lose a lot of fucking people and resources trying to do it. But it is, um, it is too valuable to them to not make that attempt. It's just a matter of when, um, and or whether or not that creature can hold them off effectively. But they're damn sure going to try. Uh, well, they tried. At least we're not dead. Mm -hmm. Do I still have ebb activity? <laughs> um no that's worn off by now damn it <laughs> maybe if you had eaten that bigger sample oh by the way patch if you had eaten that sample it was going to basically throw you into the white um you oh, were going to be awesome. you were going to be blind for three hours uh and have horrible vision like horrible like hallucinations and headaches and things like that um basically um and i'm I mean, I'm probably not, I'm not really giving away too much sharing this because you'll have an incredibly difficult time getting this information with the way that the game is going. Um, but this is going to basically be the way that they are going to kind of trigger the neck and throat transformation again is by utilizing the resources on this planet. They have like, instead of, you know, fi having to find the white, um, they're going to be able, they're just basically going to be able to engineer it and trigger that that reaction kind of chemically as opposed to you know the way that they did it before oh sweet it was gonna be like ultra violence except for magic <laughs> well it's just kind of allowing the final evolutionary stage of them which they didn't have like the ability to do before so it doesn't really it's not going to really do benefit although some of it might in certain ways certainly some drugs will probably be developed out of it and whatnot but um it doesn't really benefit specific like and like ab, like low level abusers um other than like people who are like right on the edge of where they would have they would have transferred originally so yeah. anything else are we gonna wrap uh, I'm good. all right yeah yeah it's a wrap archie i'm i'm good man all right all right. Um, well, uh, if I assume everyone's good for next week, then we'll we'll do that. Um, you know, I know we took like kind of a, a little bit of a break after the big arc, but we had a lot of break up in this one. 
honestly, I probably would have had more sessions on Dolber 3 if we didn't have that, but I just kind of wanted to move on to the next thing at this point, um, because we had, you know, this been on this for like three months, so, um, so we'll just kind of move right into it, but I would definitely appreciate, uh, some, some discussion about what the intentions are next and what your plans are, so I can kind of build the next arc around that and figure out what y'all are doing. Let's go kill Halloween Jack. <laughs> That'll be quick. <laughs> Great. We'll get this done by the end of the month. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't think we can even find him, let alone, like, do anything to him. Yeah, it'd be really difficult. I mean, even if you if if you were, like, higher level and you called him out, yeah, he'd find Jin kill you pretty quick. But you're just, like, some randos, like, calling your shot. I don't, I don't, you'd have to do a lot to get his attention. <laughs> yeah, like... All right. Um, well, good session. Uh, very interesting. Um, very fun. Uh, I hope y'all weren't too bored with the breaks in between. Um, and like I said, just we'll figure out where to go from here and we'll pick it up next week. So thanks it, it for watching, everybody. A few points, so <laughs> there's that. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. See you soon. Later.